Let us say amen. amen. We thank God for another opportunity of being in your presence. We pray that you are praying for the preacher. Amen. That God has a word in the mouth of the preacher that is right for your individual situations. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Don't take for granted that when you show up at the house that you're going to get what you need if you haven't prayed for it on the way. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, and I alerted those of you who were on the call with us on yesterday that we would be here. I pray you have taken a look at the lesson from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. We're going to look at the first eight verses so that somebody can leave here with a new attitude. Eight being the number of spiritual renewal. Say amen. Amen. If you need spiritual renewal, say amen. 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 Every day I need new grace and new mercy. Every day I need the favor of the Lord to fall fresh upon me. If you have the ability to stand, please do so to honor the word of God as it's read in your presence. From the sixth chapter of Isaiah, the first eight verses from the King James Version of the Bible, it reads thusly, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord also sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. That word twain just means two. And one cried unto another. What did they say? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the doors moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, This has touched thy lips. Watch the text. And thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. Oh, praise God up in here. Verse 8, here's the new beginning. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Here's my response. Then said I, here am I. I. Send me. So read it, the word of God to the people of God. God, have thy way in this house. Free us to be better people. Free us to be obedient people. Free us to be a loving people. Free us to be saved people with purpose. In Jesus' name, do we pray and ask it all. And I say, amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, say, it's hot up in here. Say, we ain't going to be here too long. Amen. But we're going to be strong when we leave. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to be strong when I leave. Say, amen. 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 You may be seated. We thank God for your presence on today. Thank God for my family from SAC 
and that long journey that they took to be here. Thank God for each visitor. Uh, I want to tell you personally that we are grateful that you're here. Our service has already been enriched by your presence. And if anybody's mean to you here, tell them, say, God's watching. If they don't speak to you, tell them, say, God's watching. Amen, somebody. We, we have made a committed effort that when folk come in, we want them to know that this ain't our house. It's the Lord's house. This ain't our church. It's the Lord's church. And shame on you if you act a fool. I'm in the Lord's church. Say amen. All right, all right. Uh, child of God, I realize that it's warm, and I'm, trust me, I'm going to give you what God gave me, and then we're going to move on. But we can't make the greatest effort in church fanning. It can't be the greatest effort you make at church is trying to stay cool. Staying cool almost killed me in my other life. Every once in a while, God got to turn the heat up so you don't want to go to hell. There will be no fans in hell. As we come to this text, we come to this text with some knowledge. Those that was on the line with us yesterday, we realized God has just finished telling his people that you are a rebellious people. Somebody, you should catch that because that's what we are even today. We some rebellious folks. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. And when they do, Sister McCree, I ain't doing it. But I stopped to tell you that God tries to give us instructions before we need destruction. I'm glad that God talks to a hard head preacher. I can't speak for you, but I'm glad that God still hears a sinner's prayer. I'm glad that God still tabernacles with me when I'm hard headed stiff-necked, disobedient. And as we meet this text, we're standing somewhere between the beginning, the middle, and the end of a pandemic. We're standing, so, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere we're in the midst of that. We're, we're in a place where the church stands in need of willing workers and selfless servants to push on the agenda of God. Not the agenda of Hodge, but the agenda of God. And the agenda of God is called love. Tell your neighbor, so that's all. Love is what brought Jesus from divinity to humanity and hung him on the cross. It was love. If the church ever learns to love, folk will love the church again. Somewhere, somewhere we have grown comfortable and confident sitting at home, still in sleep clothes. I'm not talking to y'all, so don't get mad. Comfortably sipping on a hot cup of coffee, abandoning ministries with unpaid tithes and offerings, still in our unsaved hand. You, you call this the new norm amongst the church folk. You, you have removed the Lord's church, his work, from any significant and prominent place in your life. I'm looking in the camera right now. We have to reestablish a loving relationship with who, who loves us even when we're not always lovable. I know with your good looking self, you think you always lovable, but I want to stop and tell you that there are times that even at our best, we're not so lovable. So Sometimes you're not even likable. But God so loved the world. I want you to understand and I want to suggest for us that the cost of being expedient and dropping down from all of the introductory things that God is interested in your well-being. If I can get you to say amen to that, I can drop off and get down to my point. That even when things don't look good in your life, God is still concerned about each one of them. 
that God has, watch this, God has a special agenda and it's got your name on it. God has special blessings and you ought to touch yourself and say, and it's got my name on it. If you still have some unanswered prayers, why don't you say, I'm still communicating with God. Don't give up so quick child of God. God sometimes have to get you prepared for what he has prepared for you. I take my seat and turn the fans off and close the door. When I want you to know God still is concerned about your prayer request. God has not tore up your prayer request, child of God. Sometimes God says wait. Why? Because they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the wings of eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk. Wait, I say on the Lord. And be of good courage. And he shall, thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I want to suggest that the pressure that's placed on us sometimes seems unfair and undue pressure. But I couldn't sleep this morning and went and got me a cup of tea at 2.30. And when I was looking in the cupboard, I could hear somebody was saying, Psst. Psst. And I looked and the tea bag was talking to me. And the tea bag say, you need to be a little more like me. You come he says, you should be at your best in hot water. <laughs> they miss it. You got it. Some of us, we ain't no good, not just in hot water, but in hot weather. I'm all in your business. God wants to bring the best out of us. And like tea bag, sometimes he got to turn the temperature up. You should be at your best when the water's the hottest. You know what a tea kettle does to get your attention? It gets hot and go to whistling. What I'm trying to say, it lets you know it's something in me that's useful. So what I'm trying to say to choir members when it get pressure put on you, a song should emerge out of it. I ain't got no help up in here. And when, when I talk to these two deacons, what I'm saying, when pressure put on you, instead of leaving the church, prayer should emanate from you. I got any help yet? To the preachers that sit behind me, when God puts the squeeze on you, a sermon should emerge out of it. Well, when he squares me, I got a sermon for you today. And I'm going to be quick with it. And here it is. The it, it, it is real simple. The art of being a good and faithful servant. When God puts pressure on the saints and the saved, he should get a servant. Say it again, preacher. I think I will. When God puts pressure on the saved and the saints, he should get a servant. Am I clear up in here? If you are saved, if you are a saint, you must be a servant. You, 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 you can't have it any other way. You are saved for a purpose. And you are saved for a purpose. You are saved for a purpose. Your job is in the process, find my purpose. God didn't just save you so you can look good. Put on a gray suit and a pink shirt and a pink... No, that's me. He, he didn't save you for you just to show up. Look up here at me and wonder what I'm doing. He saved you so when you come here, you're getting marching order. You're getting some requirements and responsibility from the Lord. Well, well, well I'm glad that we have this text because I can help you with it. Watch the text and I'm going to move quickly with it. The Bible lets me know Isaiah 
who the Bible says was a king, and if you studied it, those of us who were in 2 Chronicles, write this down, 2 Chronicles 26 is where you can find his life. This was a good king that did many good things for Israel, but near the end, he wanted to overstep his boundary. He wanted to do things that God didn't call him to do. I'm trying to help at least two of y'all. Don't get in trouble with God trying to do things he didn't call you to do. That's why we come here so we know what thus saith the Lord to me. That's the reason sometimes when you come to church, you can't sit by everybody. Because they'll uh, interrupt you hearing what God is saying and you'll leave here not having the instructions and that leads to what? Destruction. I told you that earlier. You got to remember these things because there's a pop quiz waiting on and the pop quiz happens when I have the information but not the application. God is talking to his people and he wants us to know the art, the beauty of being a good and faithful servant. Uh, here's the sight line. Isaiah was in the way and God had to move him so he could have a servant called Isaiah. God had 66 books of a Bible that needed to be written, 66 chapters in a book of the Bible that needed to be written. And he had to move Uzziah so he could get a hold of Isaiah. Be careful, be careful. I'm getting ready to go to my points, but I got to give this to you. It just dropped on me. Be careful when you put anybody in the position of blocking you from what God has to say to you. God will move them at whatever cost it is to get them out of his way. How did he move his eye? It's saying in the year that his eye died. Uh, uh, don't kill folk because you putting them in the way of God reaching you. Am I clear with anybody up in here? I'll press on to my first point. Uh, verses 1 through 4, it says right here, first point, we must look upward. Say it with me, upward. upward. It's right there in the text. If you didn't tear it out, your Bible's still open. God wants you not to have some unholy blockage, some carnal cataracts. He wants you to be able to look where? Upward. upward. Here's what it says. In Isaiah's vision is of the throne. And it says in the very first verse, in the year the king of Zion died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. Where is the throne? High. So God wants you to look where? Up. Quit looking down. Quit looking around. And child of God, begin looking where? Y'all helping me preach this thing more than you know. First of all, if you look up, you will see God's place. God's place in our life is on the throne. Amen. God's place in our life, I, I'll press on if you get this, is on the throne. Amen. The problem is we have too many others on the throne. There are some sisters in here that have put a brother on the throne. I'm waiting that, for that to land. It's two more people supposed to say amen. I feel that. It's two more of y'all that got a brother on the throne that don't belong there. If you give me an amen, I'll press on. Amen. amen. Bless your heart. We have to be careful of whom. Don't y'all brothers look at me funny. Y'all got sisters on the throne. <laughs> They thought they was exonerated. They, 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 same difference, daughter, same difference. We got to be careful of who we put on the throne. Mothers, don't put your children where? Don't put your job on the throne. Don't put your intellect on the throne. It's only room for one. On the throne. Amen. How do you know? Because if you spell throne, the last three letters is O-N-E. One. one. The throne only fits one. You have to make a decision who's sitting on the throne. Amen. You big strapling brothers, you think you belong on the throne. Some of us don't even belong in the throne room. Whoa. He saw God's place on the throne. 
And not only when we look upwards will we find God's place on the throne, we will also, when we look upward, find that we can see God's position. His place is on the throne, yes. and his position in our lives must be one of being high yeah. and lifted up, yeah. which means I need to do what with God? Lift him up. Why? Because he said, if I yeah. be lifted up, yeah. I'll draw all men yeah. onto me. If, if you really want to see God do miraculous things in your life, Wake up in the morning with praise on your lips. Yeah. Quit complaining to God about the job you begged for. Now you don't want to go to no more. Mm -hmm. Am I by myself up in here? God gave you what you asked for. Now you want to send complaints about having. He saw God's place on the throne. He saw God's position high and lift it up. Yeah. The angels cry out, holy, holy, holy unto the God of heaven. Yeah. We must, even during trying times, not allow politicians, protesting, police, pandemic, people, and even our pre-existing conditions, our problems, to stop us from giving God the praise. Yeah. Somebody right now, because you're either enduring sickness, sorrow, suffering, sadness, you have lost your celebration. I stop by to tell you, if you put God in his rightful place, yeah. keep him in his rightful position in everything will change in your life today. Yeah. Isaiah going to say in Isaiah 25 and 1, O oh Lord, thou art my God. Yeah. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For yes. thou has done wonderful things yes, sir. in my life. Anybody here owe God some praise? Don't sit there looking at me funny. If you owe God some praise, if God's done something for you and you forgot to tell him thank you then, why don't you just stand on your feet and tell God thank you. He woke me up up this morning. Clothe me in my right mind. I owe God some thank you. There were some days that God did for me and I forgot to tell him thank you. And I stopped to tell him thank you. So to defeat a joy, when you look at that beautiful daughter of yours, put your hand on her sometime and tell, say, God, thank you for watching out for her. Thank you, God, that no man will touch her till she married. You got to declare stuff in her life. Running around here scared to tell your daughter, I love you too much for a nasty old man to touch you before it's his time. Running around here scared to declare that we are the people with the promise. He saw God's place. He saw God's position. Watch this, child of God. When we look upward, we will not only see his place, his position, but he saw God's power. Say amen to me one time. It's right there in verse 4. It said, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Well, what did they cry? Holy, holy, holy. When you want the post to move, call God in his rightful name. Holy. The Holy One of Israel. When you want to see things move in the lives of people we love, tell them, say, God is holy. And he requires that we ought to be holy. Here's the good news. We've all messed up, but God has a hot coal waiting to clean you up. The hot coal is the word of God that if you show up ready to receive it, God has a blessing. And it's got your name on it. He saw God's place, position. Yeah. Then, when the house is filled, not with people, but with power, then we'll see things. The psalmist said, you remember in Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He keepeth thee and will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade. That's the reason I'll get hot today. And upon thy right hand, the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from all manner of evil. He shall preserve my soul. 
The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Somebody say we must look upward. If we're going to see what Isaiah saw, we must look upward. That's the easy part. Verses 5 through 7 of this sixth chapter becomes a difficult part. I'm still in good time. I got 10 minutes and I'm going to give you one back. Verse 5 through 7, Sister Elise Michelle says that after I look upward and see God put him rightfully back in his place, position, and I get the power, yeah. I stop looking upward and read what the text says. Then I said, woe is me. For I am undone. Yeah. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hope. Everything in this text moves from looking upward to looking inward. Come on, come on. I know that's hard. Come on, come on. Need two more amens. Amen. When I look up and see God in His loving concern for me, it doesn't take me to the window to look out to see what somebody did to me. It causes me to look inward and realize what God has done for me. I need somebody to say amen. Can't no, 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 nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody stop me from giving him praise for what he's done for me. When Isaiah looks up and sees God, begins to hear the angelic voices of the voices of Zion singing holy, holy, holy. Yeah. He looks inward. And the first thing he does, he senses his own condition. It's in the text. Why? It says, woe is me. He says, I I'm not all that I thought I would. See, some of us, our pride has killed your relationship with the Lord. And with a few folk on earth too. Some of us are so heavenly bound, we're no earthly good. Uh, but, but Isaiah looks and he says, woe is me. When we look up and we will then have the desire to look in. After Isaiah saw the Lord, he instantly realized that there was a problem within himself. That this is what happens when you get close to the Lord. Moving closer to God and seeing Him, it reveals the wickedness in my own heart. It shows me the weakness in my character. It shows me God's willingness to touch me anyway. Some of us, we have folk, they've been so hard and nasty, we don't want nothing to do with them. But I'm glad that when I was at my Lord's, God reached down and picked me up. Somebody say amen. If you remember from yesterday, day study when he told him he said because of your condition you must come and say Lord wash me Lord cleanse me Lord remove from me the stain of sin so that I can get closer to you every once in a while look at your own condition look at the lies you told before you get mad at a liar I told you I told you I told you you don't get mad sister Betty when a liar tells a lie don't get mad when a thief steals. That's why they call them a thief, because they steal. That's why they call them a liar, because they lie. And God told me all of us have lied and stole. He said, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When you remember what he did to forgive you, it should become easier for me to forgive other people. He says, woe is me. Yeah. He sensed his own condition. When you sense your condition, then you can say what he said next. I am a man of unclean lips. Yeah. Thank God the Lord does not just point out our sin, but he provides us a way out of sin. Yeah. I'm glad that he didn't just sense his condition. Because I have a lot of folk who know their condition, but they don't want to do anything about it. And here's their, their, their favorite adage. That's who I am. You're going to just have to take me the way I am. God, that, 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 that's not the right answer for a holy God. He says to him, he self-admits that he's in bad shape. 
He sees his condition. Then he realizes a need of his own cleansing. Yeah. I'm glad that God has given me enough spiritual understanding to realize I need a spiritual cleansing. Yeah. I need God to cleanse my soul. Yeah. Because the Bible says a soul that sins died. God is concerned about you. God is concerned about you. God wants you to have an intimate relationship with Him. God allows us 52 Sundays to come here to tell the story about our Lord and Savior. You must sense your own condition. You must sense the need of your own cleansing. And look what He says. For my eyes have seen the King. When you can sense your own condition, realize you need your personal cleansing, then you can have corrected vision. There was a day I thought I saw pretty good and went to the optometrist and they put the glasses on me and I said, I can see clearly now. I can see things that before were blurry to me. I'm trying to help somebody. Somebody up in here until you realize your own condition, a need for your own personal cleansing, you can never get a corrective vision. You will always have Uzziah standing in the way of God. You will not be able to get to the God who's able to do all things until you get a corrected vision. You must put God in his proper place, position, so you can achieve his proper power. Somebody say, man, I I'm so close to finish, you don't even understand that, that I'm on target to be done in three minutes. Uh, what I'm saying is that the child of God, if you're going to be a good and faithful servant, you must have corrected vision. You must see people the way God sees them. Say amen. amen. We have to quit minimizing folk. We got to quit isolating folk. We have to become real ambassadors of love. Say amen. Amen. Then that's when you see God in his true form. We must look upward if we're going to see what Isaiah saw. And that's the look of a servant being perfected. We must look inward to sense what Isaiah sensed. And that's a servant being perfected. Perfected doesn't mean perfect. It means mature. Somebody needs to mature on this journey today. Somebody needs to have a upward, inward look. Because if Zion Hill, if the church of God is going to receive the marching orders to do what we need to do, if we're going to love the people that come in that they don't want to leave out, then we must be willing to look upward to get the order, inward to see why we're making excuses and not being example. I ain't got no help. I'll go by myself. But to close it with verse 8, if we're we're going to be new. Then we've looked upward. We've looked inward. Now we must march onward. Say amen. Uh, somebody say onward. We have to quit sitting around waiting on folk and we need to go out and we need to do what the Lord said. He says, as you go, let people see your light and let it shine so bright that folk want to follow you back to the house of the Lord. We need to say what Isaiah said. He said, I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us. Then said I, then said I, Zion Hill, I'm talking to you. I wish I could see you, but you're so close to your seat and not on your feet, I can't find. Then said I, then said I, here am I, Lord, send me. We can never be what God called us to be if we're not willing to go where he said go. The first place I invite you to go is the Hebrews 10 and 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. So much more as you see the day approach is getting late in the evening. Yeah. And it's time to get this thing right. Yeah. I'm ready to move onward and go forward. Yeah. It means I need willing workers yes, to show up 
on the hill yes, and do the work of the Lord. Yes. We need to stop looking backwards. Yes. Stop looking downward. Yes. Stop looking sideward and do what he said. He says, I am available. Yes. You all been to school oh, yes. and in elementary they would call the roll. Yes, and your job was to say, here, God stopped by Zion Hill with all of y'all tired self sitting down. Done spent too much time doing other stuff. But it's time to stand up for the Lord. It is time to tell God, here, when he calls my name, I'm going to say, here. As soon as Isaiah heard the voice, he says, I am available. Zion Hill, it's time to be available. Thank you, daughter, for saying here. Thank you to my wife for saying here. It is time to just tell God here. God doesn't need your ability. He needs your availability. You need to tell God here am I. I'm glad that when God sent out a call, he stopped by a crack house in Cleveland, knocked on the door. I was in the crack house, but God loved me so much that he stood there until I got finished getting high. I'm glad when God needed somebody, he stood and waited on me till I stopped thinking I was some kind of pimp or player. And God stood and waited on me. And I said, God, here on a deathbed, dying from a cocaine-induced coma, God stood there and waited. And I'm glad that I got a God that can use a crackhead to stand up and tell folk that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of my God is eternal life. I'm glad that God can still you somebody like me ain't you glad that God will use whoever he chooses I'm glad that I'm available but he just wasn't available he went a little further come go a little further he says I am agreeable there are a lot of folk that are available but they're not agreeable I'm glad he said here am I he was saying God Whatever you need, he use me to your choosing. I'm glad that I didn't put up any parameter and tell God that I had to do it this way or I had to do it that way. However he wants me, I'll be used by God. Say thank you. Not only should you be available, but you ought to be agreeable. God needs some saints of God yeah. to be agreeable today. Yeah. My last point and I'm gone. He goes far enough that he says this, send me. Yeah. Yeah. That means he's available, yes, he's agreeable, yes, but he's also assignable. Oh, yes, See, you have to be willing to be assigned. Yes. See, you don't get to choose where he's going to use you. I, I, I would have chosen Amen. somewhere else. But I'm glad that God dropped me off at the hill. Come on, choir. Because it was on a hill called Calvary. Where he had walked through 40 and two generations. Parked himself in the womb of a virgin. Walked the dusty roads for 33 and a third long years. Stopped by to be judged by evil men. They crowned him with 72 thorns. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. Yes, and I hear him saying, I'm available. I'm agreeable to this because the Bible said, no man taketh my life. But I lay it down, and if I lay it down, I'll pick it up. Yes. And he was assignable because he said, I must do the work of he who sent me. I'm glad that he thought enough of you and I that he died. 
on that old hill he died but he didn't stay dead because early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand he has the power to change lives today and if you are willing to give your life to him today if you're willing to tell the Lord I'm available I'm agreeable and Lord I'm assignable if you come unto him, he will in no wise cast you out. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Yeah. And he has the power to move in our lives that we might be good and faithful servants. I'm gone. On the night that he was betrayed, he had stopped previous to that to meet with the disciples. In the 25th chapter of Matthew, and he said to them a parable about three travelers. He said one was given five talents, one two, and one one. He says, then the master left, and when he returned, he called them in. He said, what did you do with them five talents, Cherry? And Cherry said, Master, I love you so much, I took and I have five more. And he says to Cherry, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now I've been faithful over a few things. Eighty years you've been faithful. He said, I'll now make you master over many. He reached over and got the other one. He says, come here. He said, I gave you two. He said, I got two more for you. He says, thou good and faithful servant, thou been faithful over a few things. Come on, I'll make you master over many. Lastly, the one who had one, he called him in. He said, Master, you a hard man. You want things that you didn't give. He said, so all I have, I buried what you gave me, and here you can have it back. He said, thou wicked and slowful servant. He says, depart from me and go into utter darkness. God is coming back to make a request of what have you done with what I gave you. Child of God. Be about your father's business. Whatever that gift is he gave you, use it to the building of his kingdom. Yeah. And God has a reward for you. For my Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please God. If you have enough faith to trust what I just said, that he hung, bled, and died, got up on the third day morning, then you need to come unto him if you don't have a personal relationship with him. If, if you know that God has moved in your life and he's calling you, it has an assignment for you, then you ought to say yes, Lord. Because God is coming back one day, and he, we must give an account what we have done in these lives. Yeah. And I'm glad that I don't just look upward, I look inward. But I have enough faith, the audacity of hope to look onward. I know that one day my master shall return, that the trump will happen, the sky will open. The dead in Christ will rise and those of us who remain here. We will be caught up in the twinkling in a moment. And we must give an account for what we have done. The Lord is trying to move in your spirit, man or woman today. And he wants you to learn the art of being a good and faithful servant. Because he has a reward waiting on those of us who will do so. I'm grateful to God today. We offer you an opportunity. That if you don't know the Lord and the free partner of your sin, you may come now. We offer the invitation. If you're unsaved, never been baptized, ushers on their feet. If you've never been baptized, that you can come at this time. You can come now as a candidate for baptism. Saying to the Lord, take me to the redemptive, refreshing waters of baptism. Or maybe you've been baptized, but you've just drifted away from the church, and church has drifted away from you. We offer you that opportunity to come back to the Lord. Not to be a member of Zion Hill, but just to be a part of the body. We're not asking for membership, but God is looking for stewardship, relationship with Him. And you may come now, and we'll give you a letter saying that you reestablish a personal relationship with Him here. And you can go wherever you want. Or maybe the Lord has moved in your spirit, man or woman, and you know this is where I need to be. And I want to come to be a part of this ministry. I know that there's work that the Lord has assigned to me, and we offer you that opportunity at this time. You may come in any of those ways. Candidate for baptism, restoration to the body of Christ, 
or for membership to this part of the local body called Zion Hill.